Hello, everyone. My name is Madalina Banarescu, and my PhD thesis is about approaches to reconstruction of oral maxillofacial defects based on virtual surgical planning and intraoperative surgical navigation. Uh, my vision is to improve the life quality of patients with oral maxillofacial def defects by improving the aesthetics and functional outcomes in reconstruction techniques. I have two ongoing projects so far. The first one is a systematic review and a meta-analysis, and we try to investigate the intraoperative surgical navigation over the conventional technique in the management of zygomatic or maxillary complex fractures. There's a large number of new cases of facial fractures every year. We ha here we just have an example from uh, 2017, and there is a high number of zygomatic or maxill uh, maxillofacial fractures uh, uh, during uh, this uh, number. And uh, what's more concerning is that a large number of them, uh, a large number of the patients have a remaining mid-facial deformity after the conventional surgical treatment. So this is why we are trying to assess the accuracy in treating these zygomatic or maxillary complex fractures by using uh, the intraoperative surgical navigation. We used the PICO format and we compared the patients treated uh, without the intraoperative surgical navigation and those treated with, uh, with the use of intraoperative surgical navigation. And the primary outcome was the uh, accuracy and we measured uh, the accuracy uh, uh, at uh, two, uh, two dimension and uh, three dimension. Uh, and our hypothesis was that intraoperative surgical nav navigation would be more effective in treating the zygomatic or maxillary complex fractures. Here you have the search key uh, that we used, and we used the three domains. And uh, at the end uh, of the search, we uh, found only five full uh, text <coughs> eligible studies. And here I want to show you some results. Uh, the first figure is about the accuracy of the most prominent point. You can see it in the, ima in the image. It's a two-dimensional uh, analysis, uh, and uh, we measure the mean, differences, the mean difference in millimeters. And as we can see, uh, we noticed no difference between uh, the two groups. Uh, in the second figure, we measure the accuracy, uh, a still two-dimension two uh, accuracy of the infraorbital rim, and we measure uh, the accuracy at the level of infraorbital rim because this type, uh, these types of fractures are often asso associated with uh, orbital fractures. Uh, but still, there was no difference uh, between uh, the two groups. This was the three-dimensional analysis between the conventional and, nav and, and navigation-guided group. Uh, and uh, this time, we noticed a significant difference between the navigation group and the conventional one. Uh, we had better results in the navigation group. However, it's pretty hard to say if these results are uh, actual clinically significant. Uh, Next, we measure the operative time in the navigation guided versus conventional surgery, and here we expected like to have uh, the biggest difference between the two techniques, but we noticed basically no difference between uh, the two groups. It was only a three minutes difference uh, between them and no statistical significance. We also measured the maximum mouth op opening between the two groups because uh, often in the zygomatic or maxillary complex fractures, there is an entrapment of the muscles and then we have a limited uh, mouth opening uh, after the surgery or even before the surgery. So it's also important to measure this outcome, but we still didn't notice any difference between the two groups. Uh, this is the most compre comprehensive meta-analysis on intraoperative surgical navigation in treating zygomatic or maxillary complex fractures, and we did investigate mul multiple outcomes, and we did multiple accuracy analysis. However, we have a small number of studies included, and we couldn't measure the soft tissue, which is also important when, you talk, when we talk about the aesthetics uh, of the patient, and uh, our studies included multiple types uh, of fractures. Um, as a conclusion, we can say that intraoperative surgical navigation could improve postoperative average deviation. However, no significant difference was, was found in the other outcomes, such as the accuracy of most prominent point and infraorbital point, the operative time, and maximum mouth opening. It's important to notice for practice that 
this uh, system, the intraoperative surgical navigation, could be used in the case of the more severe fractures. It could be also uh, be used by the young uh, by the young surgeons. But however, it's also important to notice that uh, there is a learning curve uh, when using these types of new systems. Uh, for research, it is it is important to notice that future research should focus on uh, better uh, dividing the types of fractures when applying this kind of system. We should measure also the time uh, using the, in the, the intraoperative surgical navigation during the surgery. And we also need to measure the orbital volume, the, uh, take into consideration the preoperative measurement of the maximum mouth opening, and also a system for evaluating uh, the soft tissue. Uh, and we will soon uh, submit uh, the paper to the cranial maxillofacial surgery. The second, in the second project, we want to investigate the effectiveness of the same system, but this time in the management of orbital reconstruction. It's still a systematic review and a meta-analysis. We want to uh, investigate the orbital fractures because, as you noticed, in the implication for research in the first project, uh, I pointed out that we should also measure the orbital volume, and we wanted to do that in the first meta-analysis. However, there, there was only one study investigating the orbital volume. Uh, so this is why we wanted to investigate the uh, orbital fractures, and also because they are often associated with the, zyg with the zygomatic uh, maxillofacial complex fractures. So we can also see that these fractures are uh, uh, are in a pretty high number, and this is also a, challenge, a challenging task uh, for the surgeon because the functional and aesthetic implication and the post-operative complication can lead to secondary reconstruction, which is very expensive. So this is why we try to investigate the clinical out outcomes of orbital reconstruction assisted by intraoperative surgical navigation as well. We use the same uh, PICO format, and the question is if intraoperative surgical navigation can achieve better clinical outcomes uh, over the conventional technique. But this time, instead of the accuracy, the uh, primary outcome would be the orbital volume. Uh, and then we will have the implant accuracy, operative time, and uh, other complication, uh, complications that are associated with orbital fractures. And our hypothesis would be that intraoperative surgical navigation can achieve better clinical outcomes uh, than the conventional uh, technique. Here you can see the preliminary search, uh, which we did so far in three uh, uh, main databases. And this project is still in early phases. We plan to submit the first one and then uh, continue with the second one. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your nice presentation. And this topic is open for discussions. Hi, Madalena. Thank you for the presentation. So I have a question about your first project. You mentioned that your main outcome is deviation. Uh, yes. is, it might be a common t term in your field. I don't know because I'm not familiar with it. But deviation from what? So it's a deviation from the plan. Because when we use the intraoperative surgical <coughs> navigation, we first uh, use uh, a program that is called virtual surgical planning in which we first plan the surgery and we use the uh, unaffected side of the patient so we have the ideal result that we want to achieve and then we compare that ideal result with the actual result that we have. So we measure the average deviation of the post-operative result with the ideal result that we would like to have and it's a, devi it's, it's a deviation from that. I see. Thank you. Congrats, very good presentation. <clears throat> I had a question related to first project. So you mentioned in your impact in implications for practice that uh, it would be used for young surgeons or severe fractures. Uh, so since it has significant, uh, it improves clinical significantly the clinical outcomes. What would be the reason to not use it in all surgeries? Like, is it cost related? Um. Yes, it's mainly cost-related and also uh, learning curve-related. Uh, this system is, uh, so it was first used for uh, neurosurgery, 
but uh, in the maxillofacial field, it started to have like a lot of um, types of surgery in which we can use it. So, for example, you can use it also for foreign body removal, so not just only for treating fractures, and also for a lot of other types of fractures, so not only zygomatic or maxillary complex fractures or uh, orbital fractures, but uh, it's a, a pretty expensive uh, system, uh, and so far the truth is that we don't have so many evidence that uh, it improves significantly the outcomes uh, so we can say for sure that we should actually use uh, this kind of system for every, types of, uh, for every type of surgery.